What Unsolved Mystery Gives You the Creeps? Part 7. If you like the kind of content we create, please subscribe, like, and share our channel thread tonic. Account 1. Alicia Showalter Reynolds. In 1996, she was 25 years old and traveling between Baltimore, MD, and Charlottesville, VA, to meet her mother. Her car was quickly found on the side of Route 29 in Virginia, and her body was found a few months later. There were reports of a man trying to get women driving on Route 29 to pull over by indicating there was something wrong with their vehicle. The case has never been solved. In the last few decades, multiple women have vanished, been murdered in this area. Account 2. This one is a real story from me. Back at last year, I was visiting a friend of mine on other states since we only knew each other via internet. We both loved stuff like scary movies, paranormal stuff, scary stories, these kinds of stuff. So a few months before my trip, we agreed to invade an old abandoned prison near her home. She was the kind of girl that wasn't afraid of doing things like this. So back to when I was already there. We were supposed to enter the prison through a big hole on one of the prison walls. Sadly, apparently they had recently fixed the hole, so we had to find another route. So then we noticed a big open terrain that the owner was probably renovating. It was large, and one portion was still filled with lots of plants and trees, with the bases of what would be a house in the future near the open gate. Since it was past midnight, it was almost pitch black, saving some few spots that the streetlights could reach. So we had to be careful. Not only was dark, but everything turned into mud because it rained early at the day. We saw a big stair we could use to jump the prison wall, but we were still thinking how we would get out after that since we couldn't bring the stair with us. And then she told to be quiet because she saw something. I couldn't see a thing because I left my glasses at the hotel together with a knife I had brought in the case of an emergency. We then went to the other side of the land that had less trees but more mud. She grabbed her phone and started recording so she could use the phone as a flashlight to see what was going on. When we were almost near the trees, I told her to stop. I was hearing something really creepy. It was the sound of something breathing really hard, not like a human breathing hard, like a big horse or a bull breathing really hard. She then pointed the flashlight to the spot. I said the sound was coming from, and just said, let's get out of here quick. I couldn't understand really why because I can't really see things far away. She then said she saw a big pair of glowing eyes next to a tree, and we then turned back, moving as fast as we could, walking on mud. The sound started getting really close, and when she turned her head and her flashlight back to me, she saw something she said was pitch black, with glowing eyes taller than me. I'm 190. She screamed to run, grabbed me by the wrist, and we ran as fast as we could back to the main street far from the prison. When we got back to her home, we tried to see if the camera had caught the thing, but she reacted so fast, the camera wasn't able to catch anything clear, and most of the recording was really shaky. We spent the, basically, the next three hours watching the prison in fear, wondering what had just happened. We saw the flashlight of the guards looking for something at the prison site. For as much we were watching, we don't know if they were searching for us or the thing. We never came back to check out that place. Weeks after I was already back at my home, she told me they started demolishing the old prison little by little since then. Account 3. There was a man shot in my hometown around 13 years ago, killed with a handgun for no obvious reason while his wife and two children were in the house. This was in Scotland, incidentally, where owning any gun is very rare and handguns are illegal. The murder weapon was found dumped in a drain close by. The creepiest bit was earlier that evening. I had walked into town and on the way back, noted just how eerily quiet it was. Normally the road I was walking alongside would be fairly busy, as it is a part of a main route between two major cities, and for whatever bizarre reason, they've yet to build a bypass around the town. That night, though, there were no people walking on the pavements, no cars going past at all, barely any sound at all. Thought nothing of it until the next day, when I found out what had happened later that night. Plus, my destination wasn't that far from the scene of the crime. Had I left a bit later, I might have heard the gunshots, which is a bit of a scary thought. Account 4. This is one that happened to me that creeps me out. I was in my house home alone one night. Parents were out with siblings, 
and I was on my computer when all of a sudden I hear a weird noise upstairs. I head up to find absolutely nothing and go downstairs. It happens again with the same results. The third time, I get sick of it and head into my room, where the noise seems to be coming from. The second I open the door, the power goes out. I hear the noise one more time, but really close, and the power goes back on. No changes, nothing. Either I was really tired or that was a ghost. Account 5. I worked with a girl at a local convenience store in Camden, NJ, in 2003. She was two years younger than me. Worked two jobs. She worked at a Wendy's, too. Went to college part-time and helped take care of her family. One day she goes to take out the trash and disappears in October. Like she wasn't even wearing shoes, just socks. No jacket, no wallet, no money, nothing. No one has heard a thing. Never picked up her last checks. No movement on her social security number. There was a reward up for a little bit. It freaks me out. Like I had just been talking to her the day before. Account 6. Definitely the Black Dahlia murder. It was so precise and professionally done, you'd think it would be the work of a serial killer. But there hasn't ever been any other bodies that could be connected to whoever this person was. So the theory is it was some surgeon. Account 7. I love the case of Ambrose Small. December 2nd, 1919 is that last time anyone heard or seen anything at all concerning the whereabouts of Ambrose Small. It's speculated that he was killed by his wife and her lover and he was cremated in the furnace of his theater The Grand in London, Ontario. I'm working on a musical about it right now, and it's so good, it explores all the different theories and how they could have fit together. Count 8. The Gilgo Beach Murders. What creeps me out most is that when the bodies were found, I was commuting to and from work via Ocean Parkway. I remember when they shut down the parkway while they were combing the area for more remains. For context of the creepiness, the parkway is only two lanes wide in each direction, and the land it sits on is less than a mile wide with water on both sides, and 15.59 miles long with no exits to mainland Long Island, between Jones Beach and Robert Moses Causeway, at mile 1529. At the time, there were no lights on Ocean Parkway, so after dusk, you see nothing but pitch black darkness. In the winter time, that's basically any time after 4.30 p.m. A terrible place to get a flat tire or for your car to break down. There's about 10, 16 murders associated with the Gilgo Beach serial killer. Most are prostitutes that had advertised services on Craigslist, but others don't fit the bill. A man, a toddler. Which could mean that it's been a dumping ground for multiple murderers for years. Account 9. My high school English teacher told us a story about her friend that was a wildlife photographer. Her friend went camping by herself on a campground. The owner told her that there were no other reservations while she was there. So she'd be the only one. Well, when she got home to develop the pictures she took, there was a whole series of photos of her sleeping. Now that I retell this, it sounds like the owner of the campground was a creep. Account 10. The Tara Calico case and the picture believed to be her tied up and held with a young boy. The picture was found in a parking lot of a convenience store. The woman who found the photo said that it was in a parking space where a white windowless Toyota cargo van had been parked when she arrived at the store. She said that the van was being driven by a man with a mustache believed to be in his 30s. Police set up roadblocks to intercept the vehicle, but the man has never been identified. Account 11. Roanoke Colony Disappearance. Where did they all go? So the colony was having trouble, so its leader John White decided to go back to England to do a supply run. He told the colonists that if shit went down, put a note on this tree so we know what happened. White gets back to England, but for reasons isn't able to go back to the colony. I think war broke out. After a few years, he jumps on the first ship that will take him, which was a privateering vessel, Legal Pirates. He gets back, sees the place is empty, and goes over to the tree to see someone wrote Croatone on it. There was a nearby native tribe called the Croatans that had been pretty friendly with the colony in the past. White wanted to go check it out, but the privateers said they didn't want to and that they were leaving. Years later, when people visited the tribe, they saw that lots of the natives had paler skin and blue eyes. They probably just gave up on the colony and decided to live with the natives. Some people say the natives attacked them, but as the colony wasn't destroyed, that was probably not the case. 
Account 12. The Zaharias Children. A woman, Susan Zaharias, kidnapped her children, Christopher and Lisa May, from the father, Louis Zaharias, 30 years ago, and still have not been found, but are alive. She ran away and hid at family's house, and they paid a bunch of people off to keep her and the children's whereabouts secret. Please, please either read up on the case. It is so heartbreaking and so solvable, but the authorities will not do anything to help the father. Account 13. The Boston Strangler Murders. Thirteen women were strangled in their own homes with their stockings, scarves, bras, whatever was around, and then raped with items like broomsticks and wine bottles. Their bodies were posed after they died and left to be discovered. They never caught the guy this day. Account 14. I don't remember her name but the one where the lady was being stalked and ended up dead, but the police feel the evidence points to her doing it to herself. There are recordings of messages of the stalker, her, and they give me the willies. Stalking stories in general are always the scariest to me because of the idea of someone watching you to gather info to harm you while you're unaware is terrifying. But the twist in this one of someone that was probably terrorizing herself is really unsettling to me. And there's also the possibility that they're wrong, which is also horrifying because the real person never was caught and got the blame put on his victim. Account 15. The alleged Crowley murders in darkest Sussex in England. The cult that was born out of Alistair Crowley's time in Hastings still lives on. But back in the 60s and 70s, many young kids went missing and bones would turn up in the seaside caves or washed up on the shore. They were always charred. Some were tied together to form a pentagram. Nobody was ever caught or charged, but the main suspects were the Crowley cult.